Hello and good day to all of you. So today we will discuss selected DC network theorems. And before I do that, I want to to thank all of you, to those who support my channel. As of the moment, we have 415 subscribers. Thank you very much. And uh, to those who are new, uh, just uh, uh, hit the subscribe button on the right side of the YouTube channel. And uh, also, uh, I want to uh, uh, thank to do thank you to those who uh, make suggestions and comments about my uh, uh, my lectures. So as you can see, we have a very clear uh, discussion here. We have improved lighting. Also, we have a lapel. Okay, for uh, a much better or clear audio. So, thank you for those who commented and suggest those things for the improvement of this channel, the online electrical engineering review and tutorial channel. Okay, uh, let's move uh, forward to our topic, which is selected DC network theorems. So, why it is selected? Because some of the theories that I will discuss here are typical DC network theorems that you can use uh, for shortcuts and then if you use these theorems at least two or three you can solve any problems on uh, on DC network uh, circuits or DC circuits so the other uh, network theorems uh, will be discussed on the next few lessons but as of the moment we will uh, discuss some selected DC network theorems such as the voltage divider principle, the current divider principle, the Milman's theorem, uh, the Tevin's equivalent, and the Norton's equivalent. The others like mesh, nodal, uh, superposition uh, can be discussed on the next few lessons. Okay, let's concentrate first on v, uh, VDP or voltage divider principle. Uh, we have an acronym here as VDP, Voltage Divider Principle. So, Voltage Divider Principle is derived on a series combination. So, uh, we go back on a series network and we have two resistances connected in series for a much simpler discussion and a DC source V and a current loop I. So, we can use here first Ohm's law, we need to get first the voltage at the first resistor and the second resistor by having V is equal to IR. So for this, we have V1 is equal to I times R1 and V2 is equal to I times R2. We could have this as equation number 1 and 2 respectively. And then we use the Kirchhoff's voltage law and we use the first in method. For this, minus V, drop, plus V1, another drop, plus V2 is equal to 0. So rearranging the equations, uh, the equation rather, in such a way that we can get the total voltage, and the total voltage is simply V1 plus V2. Or the total voltage is simply, based on voltage divider, prince, uh, rather on uh, KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law, that is simply equal to the voltage along the elements. So, total voltage. So, V1 plus V2. And you can rewrite that like this. And you can see here another alternative of the uh, another alternative of the derivation. You can see here R1 plus R2 is the total resistance, I could say REQ. Wherein, you can get the current by having V all over REQ. Now, this REQ is the total resistance at a series combination. So we already described this one on the series combination that the total resistance is the sum of all of the resistances connected. So this is the same thing as you can see, total resistance. Okay, now since we already have uh, derived the total resistance and the current, now rearranging again that equation, we could have I is equal to V all over total resistance of so R1 plus R2. Okay, this equation 3 can be substituted to equation 1 and 2. So if you do that, at equation number 1, which is this, 
substitute i here at equation number one. What will happen is this. Okay, v1 is equal to v all over r1 plus r2 times r1. And hence, if you do that also at v2, it's very clear why it is voltage divider because the voltage at resistor 1 okay, is divided or the total voltage divided into V1 and V2 respectively. So whatever the percentage is dependent on the resistance value. And one more thing is you can see if this is V1, this is R1. If this V2 is equal, to, this is also R2. So it is dependent on the resistor okay that is on v1 and r1 respectively v2 and r2 respectively so it is divided based on the value of the resistances as you can see r1 and then r1 plus r is the total resistance this is the total resistance from the series combination and hence we can have a general formula this is the general formula for the voltage divider principle if you want to get the voltage, if you have N resistance, uh, resistances or N resistors and you want to get the specific value of the voltage there at a N resistor, simply equal to the total voltage and divided into Rn all over the total resistance. So this is the general formula for voltage divider principle. Hello once again. Now we will discuss the second type of uh, DC network theorem, which is the current divider principle, or in terms of acronym CDP. So, what is current divider principle? It is derived on parallel resistances. So, if the voltage divider principle is derived on a series resistance, here voltage divider principle is derived on a parallel resistance. Okay, we can examine uh, a certain circuit. We have two resistances again connected in parallel and it is connected in the same voltage source V, DC source and we make use of these currents here I is equal to I1 plus I2 by using KCL and one characteristic of a parallel uh, combination is the voltage at this type of circuit is constant. Okay, so whatever the voltage at R1 and R2, that is equal to V. Okay, let's move forward. So here, the voltage at uh, this resistor at R1 is I1 times R1. The voltage at this branch at resistance 2 is I2 times R2. Or in other words, if we arrange the equation in terms of I1 and I2 respectively, we will have this value or this uh, equation here v over r1 for i1 and i2 is equal to v all over r2 as i have mentioned a while ago that we can have a kcl at node a so we already discussed kirchhoff's current law that whatever the current that is going to a node is simply equal to the current living at the node so that is i is equal to i1 plus i2 now we have three important equations here to derive the uh, current divider principle. So, if we substitute 1 and 2, these two equations here at uh, equation number 3, it will yield to this relationship. And let's uh, isolate V, the common value V, and then you have 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Now, this one is look spam. Why? Because this is the resistance combination of a parallel network which is, one all, is equal to 1 all over RT or 1 all over R equivalent which is this. So V is equal to 1 all over REQ but 1 over REQ is simply equal to this one. And please take note, if we arrange this equation here, we can have the product all over the sum value which is R1 over R2 is equal to R1 plus R2 equal to REQ. And again, this is only for two, two, huh? two resistors. We cannot implement this one no, on a 
on a resistor that is, for example, you have parallel resistances up to five, you need to simplify this, uh, all of those up to two resistances in order to uh, apply the CDP or current divider principle. Now, in this case, yes, V is equal to one, uh, I times R equivalent, and that R equivalent is product all over the sum. Now, this is equation number four. Now, equation number four can be substituted on equations one and two to determine the current divider uh, formulas. Okay, first, if we substitute V here at this equation, you can see R1 will be canceled out, right? And then leaving behind I and then R2 over R1 plus R2, okay, which is equal to I1. And hence, that is the answer, okay? Also, if you do this one no, here at equation number two, okay, R2 will cancel out, okay, and leaving behind, okay, this is the value V, huh? you substitute the value V there, and R2 will cancel out, and leaving behind R1 over R1 plus R2 multiplied by I. So this is the equation for the current at the second resistor. So as you can see, um, uh, the voltage divider principle and current divider principle was almost the same, but in terms of resistance, okay, uh, resistance uh, ratio on the voltage side, okay, uh, the resistor is the same number here, but on the current side, it is on the opposite adjacent side. So it means if this is I1, it must be R, R2 if you have two resistances and. Divide by the total resistance, R1 plus R2. And if this is I2, okay, this is the, uh, the resistance R1. So this is opposite, the opposite resistance all over R1 plus R2. And again, it is uh, called a current divider principle because the current will be dependent okay, on, the, on, the, the v, uh, on the divider or the division or, or the ratio of the resistances which is R1 and R2, respectively. So, that's why I1 is dependent on the total current and depends on the ratio of the resistances connected in parallel. Okay, we, can, we, are, we will uh, continue the, our discussion on um, uh, Thevenin's equivalent circuit, uh, NEC, or Norton equivalent circuit, and uh, the Milmas theorem. Okay, good day to all of you. We will discuss and move forward to our next type of DC network theorem, which is the Milmas theorem. Actually, this is one of my favorite theorems because of its flexibility to solve the uh, voltage across parallel combinations. And this theorem here can be used by DC or AC circuits. Okay, let's uh, um, read what is Milman's theorem. Milman's theorem states that the resultant voltage across parallel of a parallel combination is the ratio of the short circuits okay, that is flowing to the source all over to the sum of internal conductances. When you say source or sources can be two or three, as long as they are connected in parallel. So what I want to uh, elaborate here is you have here a battery with an internal resistance, which is R1 and R2 respectively. There's an R2 here, definitely. And then they are connected in parallel and they are supplying a load. So for example, the load is R3 here. So it's like, it can be also an application on DC machines because DC machines can be two or three connected in parallel and they are uh, they are supplying a common load. You can get that voltage V across that terminal here, which is the voltage also across at E1 and E2 respectively with the drops at R1 and R2. So in order to do that, in order to solve that, the total voltage across the load R3 is simply equal to the short circuit current I1 and I2, which is E all over R1 or the current here, okay? And then the current at the second 
branch here, E2 all over R2, plus EN all over RN. So, those are the summation, or simply, in other words, the summation of all of the short circuit currents, okay, that is flowing at every branch, and you divide it by the uh, sum of the internal conductances or the summation of all of the conductances okay, at every branch. So the conductance here is 1 over G1, 1 over G2, which is we already described from the last topic, which is conductance is 1 all over R1. Or 1 over R, rather. So 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So this is G1, G2, up to the G to the N. And this one is the short circuit at 1, short circuit at 2, up to the short circuit at the end parallel branch. So that is mil series. By the way, as I mentioned, it can be DC or AC. So when we go to AC, that is R and XL, no? respectively, or R plus XC, as long as it is already in series, then connected in parallel. So this is a very, very flexible formula. It can be uh, used for DC circuits and AC circuits. So please take note of this very important DC network theorem.